Hi, folks. Hi, rock stars. I'm Allie, your rock star bar girl. What's up? Are y'all crooked? Y'all might be crooked. <laughs> so just hold your heads like that. Um, welcome, welcome to this week's tip of the week. We are live. I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes um, to get in here. Hello, I already see people starting to join. What's up, what's up? Hello, rock stars. Welcome to this week's live. Um, before we get started, well, first let me tell you what our topic for this week is. So this week's tip of the week is all about memorizing multiple drink orders. And this uh, recommendation or this question is coming to us from um, one of our rock stars, Tanya Casey. So Tanya, thank you so much for the question and for the idea um, for this week's tip of the week. I appreciate it. Um, I've talked in the past about how to memorize um, recipes for drinks, and you guys know I am a huge advocate and fan for the flashcard method. It's one of the best ways to crunch a lot of material in a short period of time, um, but I don't think I've ever done a video on um, how to memorize multiple orders um, as you try to speed yourself up and be efficient behind the bar. Um, you might want to take more than one order at a time. And if that's the case, I have a couple of tips five tips to be exact to help you to do that. So um, before we get started, I just wanna give you guys a few announcements and some updates. Um, this is our second live tip of the week. So if you tuned in last week, then you know that moving forward, our tip of the weeks are going to be live on Fridays at four o'clock. So if you have a really burning question or you wanna interact and participate in the conversation, then make sure to tune Tune in to YouTube at four o'clock. Of course, the video is available on YouTube afterwards, um, but this is a way for you to interact and get your question actually answered in real time. My instructional videos um, moving forward are going to be available on my website, therockstarbargirl.com. Um, I have two instructional videos that I'm super excited about that are in the editing phases. Um, the first is a video on how to make herbal infused honey syrups, um, which is something that a lot of you who are interested in cocktails or working at cocktail bars will definitely want to know. So that will be up soon. And also um, I have an amazing video coming out all about wine which is actually not going to be taught by me it's going to be taught by certified sommelier Michelle Erland and I'm so appreciative that she would lend her time um, to teach this class for us so it's going to be jam-packed with information I let you guys know last week that the reason I'm offering my instructional videos on my website is just because I can do so much more there for you than on YouTube. There will be class notes and downloadable PDFs and um, some lessons will come with quizzes and things like that. So it's way more interactive and um, just a better platform for you to like learn the information um, rather than just watching a video. So if you haven't already, make sure to head over to the rockstarbargirl.com and just sign up for the mailing list. You don't even have to enroll in a course, just sign up for the mailing list and you'll be notified every time um, a new video or instructional class is posted. Um, so I want to ask you guys your opinion on something. I'll probably save it to the end when there's more people in here, um, just so I can gauge your opinion on something. Um, I want to do something on the page and I want to get your advice on whether or not you think it's a good idea. But anywho, um, so hello, welcome to the live video. Today's topic for the tip of the week is how to memorize multiple drink orders. Um, so I'm gonna get started with my tips. If you have any questions or if anything that I'm saying is not clear, just interrupt me and ask a question and I can answer it for you right away. So my first tip, um, I think is really important. I always like to lead off with the most important tip um, because I have gotten this question before. The first thing that I want to tell you is to avoid giving in to the pressure to memorize multiple drink orders 
in the first place, okay? Bartending, it might seem like it, but it's not a competition. So um, there is no need for you to bartend the way the person next to you is bartending, the way the bartender next to you is bartending, the way someone you've met before or seen before is bartending. It's more of an art than a science. So I don't want you to be bogged down by this belief that you have to memorize multiple drink orders just because someone else is memorizing multiple drink orders. Your primary responsibility as a good bartender is to take people's orders, to make their drinks correctly and efficiently, to charge them the right price, give them their change, be polite, personable, and move on to the next guest. Um, certainly plenty of bartenders will take multiple uh, guests' orders at once, but they do so if they've determined that that's a effective and efficient way for them to get what they need to get done. If you feel like you can operate far more efficiently and quickly by simply taking one person's order at a time, making those drinks, serving those drinks, and then moving on to taking the order from the next person, then do that. There is no rule that says that as a bartender, you have to take multiple drink orders, okay? People do things differently. Um, as an example, I have really little hands. Um, I don't like double shaking two cocktails and shakers at one time. So I shake one at a time and I'm fast as fuck. <laughs> I have learned to work around this thing that I do and I'm just as fast, if not faster and more efficient and more neat in my pouring and my operations than any other bartender who's shaking two drinks at a time. I've learned how to adapt to my inability to, uh, thank you, Nationhood Nico. Um, I've learned to adapt to my inability to shake twice uh, or two things at one time. Um, and so if for you taking multiple drink orders at once, um, sorry, I live in the hood y'all, that's a siren going by. Let me know if it's a problem, I'll, I'll close the window. But you know, shit always be popping off around here. Um, <laughs> but um, if taking multiple drink orders or taking orders from different people all at once causes you to forget your order, causes you to get, hey, Tanya, girl, what's up? Thank you for this question. Um, if, if, if that causes you to get distracted, to get overwhelmed, to cause you to forget what the drink order was in the first place, to get sloppy and give people the wrong things, then you're not actually speeding yourself up at all. So I just wanted to start that off with my first tip. Don't buy into the fallacy that you have to bartend the way someone else does and that you have to take multiple drink orders at once. If it's faster and more efficient for you to take one order and complete it before moving on to the next, then do that, okay? Uh, tip number two, if you see me looking down, I just made some notes, um, is I just wanna clarify the difference between memorizing multiple drink orders and taking multiple drink orders because they're not the same thing and you don't have to do both. Behind the bar in any restaurant, you are going to have access typically uh, to what is called a guest check. And if you don't have access to a guest check, then you can grab yourself something like this, a little flippable notepad that you can use for yourself. But usually bars or restaurants will provide um, what's called a guest check. It's basically the same thing, a little flippable notepad that allows you to write your orders down. I encourage you to use your guest check. I don't see bartenders use them enough. You see um, wait staff and servers rely on them pretty heavily. Um, but just because you're at the bar and your orders tend to be a little smaller or tend to be all drinks and not so much food, doesn't mean you can't use a guest check. I use my guest check all the time, especially if I'm tired, I'm super, super busy, or I'm hungover and I'm just not remembering things as, as clearly as I would like, use your guest check. There is no shame in writing down what someone ordered from you. 
If you rely on your guest check, this will allow you to take multiple orders without having to actually memorize those multiple orders. So just draw that distinction from your, for yourself. If you feel like it will speed up your service and your efficiency by taking multiple drink orders at a time, then do that. But you don't necessarily have to memorize them. You could just write them down. You know, um, yes, Tanya, you don't see guest, uh, bartenders using guest checks very often. Um, it's absolutely an option. There is no rule that says that you shouldn't. It's just kind of like, you know, like not as cool, I guess, or like not a bartender thing, but Honey, I use my guest check all the time. Keep it in your back pocket. If you already wear an apron, then you've already got pockets to easily carry it. Um, if you are serving the bar and you also have to serve the tables in front of the bar, which is very common, definitely use your guest check because I promise you all that walking back and forth, by the time you leave your table and come all the way back around the bar, pick up a couple of things and do a couple things on the way, by the time you get to your POS screen, it's gone. So use your guest check. Ain't no shame in that game, okay? So memorizing multiple drink orders is not the same as taking multiple drink orders. Um, take as many as you would like, but don't necessarily rely on memorizing them if you don't have to. Just write them down. If you don't have access to guest checks um, or for some reason you feel like it is slowing you down, then you might want to memorize your orders. And in that case, simply don't take on more than you can handle. If you can only memorize two sets of orders at a time, then just take two sets of orders at a time. What's most important is being fast and efficient. So anything you do that actually hinders that you're not helping yourself and it's not benefiting you um, in any way, so don't feel pressured to do it, okay? I see that there are about six of you. What's up, rock stars? Um, I'll just take this moment really quickly to ask any of you who um, are able to, if you like this video, if you like that I'm doing my tip of the weeks live, please go ahead and click on the thumbs up um, so that when this video is done, I can see how many of my viewers actually like this format. This is really gonna help me determine if I should keep going um, with doing these videos in a live format. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so you're notified every time a new video comes out and so you get a reminder when I do go live in case it slipped your mind. Four o'clock on Fridays is the plan right now, okay? So moving on to tip number three. Uh, how do you do, Becca? What's up, girl? <laughs> um, so uh, tip number three is um, about what to do when you have decided that you actually want to take on multiple orders at a time. Um, one of the first things that I would recommend for you is to keep those orders straight in your uh, mind and to make those orders in the order and serve those orders in the order that you receive them. Okay, because what will happen is if you take an order from person A, and then you take an order, how do you deal with male guests who are creepy? Great question. Um, I will talk about that in a little bit. Um, thank you, Nika, I appreciate the like. Um, I will come back to your question. Uh, I think it was Becky, um, Becca. Um, I will come back to your question. I think that's a really good one. Um, but um, when you take multiple, sorry, tapping on the screen. When you take multiple orders um, from, let's say you take an order from guest A, right? And then you move on to guest B, before you start guest A's drink. If you serve guest B first, maybe you are thinking to yourself, oh, I'm gonna grab guest B's drink first because they're just easier. What will often happen is guest A will catch an attitude because they don't understand that you have a method to your madness and that you are actually doing the most efficient thing um, and serving, let's say, guest B's beers before building guest A's complicated cocktail. And they will feel like they've gotten forgot about, they'll feel like they've gotten slighted, and they will take issue with your service. Are they wrong? 100%. They're completely wrong, right? You need to do what's most effect effective and efficient for bar service. Um, but just to prevent yourself from having to explain to anybody or calm anybody down who's drunk and pissed and thinks you skipped over them, 
make those drink orders in the order that you receive them just so that everyone understands that they are being waited on in that order and no one has a reason to catch an attitude, okay? Tip number four, I recommend saying your orders out loud back to the guest. Not only does this allow them to correct any mistakes that they make, because a lot of times guests will um, simply say the wrong thing and not realize it. And when people are drinking, that happens more than you might realize. So repeat the order back to them. But this also will help you to remember what that order is, okay? So guest A gives you their drink orders. You would like two Bud Lights, a martini, and a vodka tonic, no problem. Move on to guest B, take their order you would like, etc. And you will remember having said those things and that will allow you to um, recall what they ordered a little bit easier. Especially if there's music playing, other people are trying to talk to you, you're talking to the servers in the server station, etc. Uh, if you're quiet, and you just assume that you'll remember it in your mind, there's a really good chance that you're going to confuse that order with other similar orders that you've already taken and you'll either make something incorrectly or you will forget about it. So I highly recommend uh, tip number four is to say the drinks out loud back to the guest, okay? And then tip number five is to pull out your glassware for all of your orders um, right away, all right? Hi, my new friend. Hi, Shadow Family Vlogs, what's up? Welcome. Um, pull out your glassware right away. Um, this is a tip that I picked up many, many years ago in bartending school. Um, I have always recommended it to my students. It has always saved me in a pinch. Let's go back to that hypothetical order that I just mentioned for guest A. Someone ordered two Bud Light, drafts, uh, a vodka martini, and a vodka tonic. I am going to go and grab two pint glasses, my martini glass, and my highball glass, and I'm gonna put them up on the bar where I build my drinks right away, okay? What this is going to do, especially if someone distracts me or something happens that um, causes me to forget, is the glass there is going to help jog my memory as to what is in this person's order. So if I'm taking multiple orders, I'm gonna pull out all of my glassware. So guest A ordered those two draft beers, the martini and the highball. The next guest orders a round of four shots, a martini, and an on the rocks drinks. I'm gonna pull out all of the glasses for both of these orders because there's a really good chance that by the time I get done with the first order, process payment, add any other drinks that they forgot about, give someone a menu, answer any questions that they might have. My um, orders for the second guest, even if I said them out loud to myself, I will forget. Now again, if I wrote them down, then I'm fine. This is assuming that you didn't write it down. If I didn't write it down, there's a really good chance that one or maybe even all of the drinks from the second guest are going to escape me. But with the glassware sitting right in front of me, it's guaranteed that it's going to jog my memory um, and that's really, really, really going to help. So I would say, um, Aside from not feeling the pressure to memorize orders in the first place, tip number five is probably one of the most key, uh, simply because it really helps you. Tanya, yeah, I'm really glad that you like that tip. It works every time, every time. Anytime I've ever forgotten, wait, what was that? I have the glasses already sitting there. So if I have a pint glass and a set of shots sitting there, there are hundreds of drinks that immediately I know it wasn't, right? So that narrows it down for me really dramatically um, and really, really helps me, um, you know, helps to jog my memory. Um, and I would say another tip that just kind of occurred to me, um, I guess you could call it like 5.5, um, is there's no shame in asking people to repeat their order, all right? Um, it might not 
be the most fun. Some people might get a little annoyed at it, but trust me, wasting the alcohol, wasting the time to build a drink that is wrong and have them send it back or complain and have to do it all over again is just going to um, slow you down. So don't feel bad about that. Caroline says, um, I feel like when it gets busy, I can get overwhelmed and my memory gets bad. That is common. That is absolutely common. The more that's going on, the more things that are being thrown at you, um, the easier it's going to be to forget things or mix orders up. So if you're just tuning in, you might have missed my previous tip, um, but don't feel bad about relying on your guest check and writing orders down. Don't feel pressure to memorize more than you have to. And if you're overwhelmed, slow yourself down and simply take and finish one person's order at a time. That is way better than messing something up, having to throw drinks away, start over, etc. cetera. Um, yes, Nico, I'm glad you agree. Don't be afraid to re-ask for orders. I promise you, having to rebuild someone's entire order or do everything over again from scratch, um, it's a waste of product, it's a waste of time, it's going to annoy the customer, it's going to make you look like you're not on top of it. It's way better to just say, hey, I'm so sorry, I actually totally spaced. What, what was your order again? Thanks so much. That's way better than botching the order and having to start over, getting further in the weeds, getting more overwhelmed and more frustrated. All right, guys, so those are my five tips. Please continue to send me questions about them. I will continue um, to talk about them. I just wanna go back for a second um, to Becca's question because I promised that I would um, ask it. And Yanni, I see your question too, so I'll come back to that. Um, but let's start off with Becca. Um, Becca, I have a video posted on how to deal with sexual harassment in the business. Um, and I talk a little bit about sexual harassment from guests as well as from your coworkers. Um, so that video should be really helpful to you. I definitely recommend that you check it out. I kind of go over in detail, um, what to do about, um, Nico, I'm just reading your point. Will motivate them to be more on point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, it will. It will help you learn what you're good at and what you're not good at. If you find yourself re-asking for orders all the time, that should be a sign to you that you need to slow it down and stop trying to take so many orders at once. Um, but uh, that video on sexual harassment is um, going to go far more into detail, not just about ways in which you can approach dealing with creepy guests, but also what to do if there's a serious ongoing problem that needs further action, like maybe even legal action or human resource action, etc. cetera. Um, I also have a video about um, building relationships with your guests and increasing your tips. And in that video, I talk about how to handle creepy guys at the bar in a way that doesn't interfere um, with your ability to get tips from people. Because at the end of the day, as creepy and gross and annoying as they may be, um, if they aren't actually um, touching you, um, threatening you, or really making you feel uncomfortable or feel fear for your safety, then at the end of the day, you just need to get their money, honey. So um, you want to be able to finesse the situation in a way that shuts it down, lets them know what will be tolerated and what won't be tolerated, but doesn't cause a situation that, um, you know, uh, walks you out of your money because that's why you're there, right? Um, but most importantly, always know um, being touched, being threatened, um, fearing for your safety, these are absolute absolute big no-nos. Uh, there is no reason to tolerate that. Do not take that just because you are a female or you work for tips. Do not feel like you need to accept any of that kind of behavior. Um, but flirty, annoying behavior is a little bit different from threatening, violent, dangerous behavior. And you might want to approach those situations differently. Um, so definitely check out those videos, okay? Um, let's head back to Yanni's question. Yanni, I feel like I'm talking really fast. So if there's anything you want me to repeat, just let me know. I've had a lot of coffee today. 
So Yanni wants to know whether or not I think um, starting off at a quote unquote hood bar is good for somebody with little to no experience. Um, anything is good for someone with little to no experience, right? If you have little to no experience, you wanna work anywhere that will hire you. So apply broadly, apply widely, apply to any and every bar that is open in your neighborhood, whether you think um, it's a good fit for you or not. Um, a lot of times we kind of think ourselves or walk ourselves right out of our own opportunities. Um, we'll say to ourselves, oh, I don't have enough experience to work there. I'm not good enough to work there. I haven't been doing this long enough to work there. What, 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 why are you doing that? Don't do that. Apply. Let, let management tell you that you don't quite have it yet to work there. Don't you write yourself off before you even walk in the door. Apply to every single bar, restaurant, paper the town with your resume. Go into every manager should see your face when you are trying to get a job and you have very little experience. Go for it, all right? Um, don't limit yourself um, to one type of bar because you think that because you're inexperienced, that's the type of bar that you should work at. Apply everywhere. Go into interviews and you might shock yourself at what caliber of bars or restaurants see something in you or are willing to train um, or just need help and you walked in at the right time. You know what I'm saying? So don't um, walk yourself out of your own blessing, your own opportunity, um, because you are, you are thinking of yourself in a limited capacity. That being said, absolutely apply to the hood bar, but also apply to the five-star white tablecloth hotel restaurant as well apply everywhere, okay? Um, what is a good bar to start off in? Every bar is a good bar to start yourself in, okay? So so don't limit yourself, all right? Um, now, if, if you feel like you won't feel comfortable somewhere, then that's kind of a different question and that's more personal. Um, if you feel like you would be more comfortable in a hood bar or in a dive bar or uh, in a chain restaurant or what have you, um, or let's say, um, you are of a, uh, an ethnic background, English isn't your second language, you feel like you would be more comfortable at a restaurant that serves um, your culture's cuisine, where the people speak your language. Whatever you need to do to feel comfortable or that you feel would work for you, certainly go ahead and do that. But what bar is good, just from an objective standpoint, any bar that is hiring is good, honey. All right, so apply to everywhere. I saw some questions go by. Mm -mm -mm. Caroline, that's a good one. Trying to go from server to bartender. My boss let me get behind the bar one night, said he was impressed, but no other opportunity came up. All right. So that happens from time to time, right? Um, the bar is in a jam, bartender calls out last minute, they grab one of their best servers off the floor and say, can you jump back there and cover us for a second? But that bartender comes back to work and boom, uh, you know, no more shifts for you. Um, the first thing that I would do is I would update your resume, okay? You bartended at that place, you are now a bartender. <laughs> All right. So if your resume for that establishment still says server in the position section, update that to server slash bartender or just say bartender. Because at the end of the day, no problem, Yanni. At the end of the day, um, pretty much every manager understands that if you are a bartender, then generally speaking, you should be... Um, if not great at, at least good at all of the aspects of being a server as well. So don't feel like you are being untrue if you simply list bartender uh, in that position, okay? So that's the first thing that I would do. No longer think of yourself as a server. You are a bartender who has only worked one shift. All right, but you're a bartender now. Um, so change your resume um, to say that you are a bartender and, and run with that. Um, the other thing that you um, might want to do is to have a conversation with all the other managers. Um, I assume that your bar or restaurant doesn't have just one manager. It might, correct me if I'm wrong, but typically there's more than one manager. 
There might be an owner um, who spends a lot of time in the bar that you can talk to. Use that good experience, that good showing, um, to let all of the other managers know, hey, um, so I don't know if you know, but I covered the bar the other night and I did a really great job. Mike said I really did a really great job. So if anybody calls out on your shifts, like I I'll come in and cover the bar. I, I, I wanna do that. I'm interested in doing that. Please let me know. Um, you can also just let all the managers know, hey, I am trying to work myself up to bartender. Here's only one boss, okay? So have a conversation with that boss and let him know, hey, um, you know, I am looking for bartending positions. Um, I would love to bartend here, but just so you know, I am applying for bartender positions at elsewhere so if a bartending position comes up here i would love to apply for it if you have any other shifts that become available i will come down at a minute's notice and i will cover that shift um one thing that i have had happen to me a lot as a manager this might not apply exactly to you because you're already a server so you know these things i'll have servers hosts etc say oh i really want to bartend here and then not learn the cocktail menu, um, not learn uh, the policies behind the bar, not start educating themselves on um, the ins and outs of bar service, but just want to bartend. So just make sure that you are learning everything about what it is to bartend in that location and ask that manager, um, hey, I know you said I did a good job. What would you want me to work on in order to feel confident putting me behind the bar on a regular basis show that person that you're serious you're not just the person to go to for coverage but the next time that they actually need a, a part-time or a full-time bartender on the schedule that you are actively looking for those types of positions okay and like i said update your resume and start applying to bartending jobs elsewhere all right because you are now Welcome to the club. You're now officially a bartender. Uh, let's see. I don't want to miss anybody's question. Nico, how should you prioritize handling drinks for servers versus your bar guests? Okay, great question. Servers always come first. Service tickets always. Peace and love, Daisy. Welcome. Thank you, Caroline. I'm glad you like that. Uh, service tickets always come first, Nico. Always, okay? Uh, the reason for this is the guests at the table are not at the bar. They cannot see how busy you are. They cannot see that you are working. Delays at the table simply come across as poor service. They come across as poor service from the bar or from the server. But regardless of who the client blames, the tip on that table will be impacted. And you are probably getting tipped out from the server. So making sure that that server gets the maximum amount of tip on the table is super important to everybody's pocket. So you must make sure that service at the tables is as quick, efficient, and excellent as possible. Everyone who is sitting at the bar can see you running around like a chicken with your head cut off, tickets pouring out of the ticket machine, and you juggling 80 things in your hands. It is far easier for you to turn to them and say, so sorry guys, here's a menu and a glass of water. Thank you so much. Can you just give me a moment? I'll be right back to you to take your order. You can do that with your guests at the bar. You cannot do that with your guests at the table. So you must prioritize your service tickets. Okay, keep your service area clean and fully stocked so that servers don't have to interrupt you in the middle of what you're doing for things that they can do for themselves. Make sure there are straws and napkins in their caddies. Make sure your garnish tray is always full. Make sure that dirty glassware has been removed and that your tickets are neat and drinks are lined up in order on the tickets so nobody has to stop you and say, uh, was this a vodka soda or a gin and tonic? Which one is which? It should be in the order of the ticket, perfectly neat, perfectly clear for the server to know exactly what's happening. Keep that station running smooth as butter. Nonsense at the bar can always be apologized for, can always be explained. You can always give someone at the bar a round of shots as a my bad for waiting too long, etc. That being said, always greet your guests the moment they come into the bar. So as soon as they come to the bar, hey guys, how are you? I'm Nico, thanks so much. Uh, here's a couple of menus. I will be right back with you. You literally could take 15 minutes to come back 
<laughs> 15 minutes to come back to that guest. But the fact that you greeted them, gave them something to look at or gave them a, a glass of water, something to drink, makes them feel like they've been served, they are cared about, and the only reason why you have not gotten back to them is simply because you're busy or a little overwhelmed with, uh, hey Taylor, welcome. Um, to, a little busy with the other uh, things that you are working on, they will absolutely sit and wait. Um, I have had guests wait, true story, 15 minutes for me to get back to them. And they've tipped me double at the end because they were just like, damn girl, you are killing it back there. Oh my God, you are working, working, hey heathens, working, working, working. They appreciate that you are moving around. They are going to be way more receptive um, to you taking a minute to get back to them as long as you show them politeness, hospitality, um, and show that it's not that you're slacking off. It's just that things are a little bit busy. Don't neglect the tickets, okay? Tickets always come first. Nico, I hope that helps. Uh, let's see who is next. Becca says she worked at a hotel bar and it was the best bar to start in. That's right. Um, it does not have to be like a casual or a dive bar uh, to be a good ex uh, learning experience. Uh, Alicia wants to know if we will save it. I assume you mean the video. Yes, ma'am. Um, it will post to YouTube as soon as I'm done recording, okay? Um, I want to take a quick second of a, a break from the other questions um, to see if anybody has any questions on the five tips for memorizing drink orders. Um, thank you, Nico. I'm glad you liked it. Um, just because I want to make sure that I answer your questions and respond to any concerns while this video is happening. Of course, if you're tuning in and the live is already over, or you think of any questions later on, feel free to just drop a question down in the comment box. I will absolutely get back to you. Uh, but if there are any questions that are percolating in your mind right now, I'd love to address them as well. I'm gonna sip my coffee. I don't need any more coffee. Does anybody else get really jittery when they drink too much coffee? I get like crazed, but I do it anyway. I kind of like the feeling. Does everybody understand what I mean? Um, off topic, would you consider doing a meet and greet? Oh, that's a great question. Um, a meet and greet, um, I haven't thought about it yet. I live in New York City. I don't know how many of my um, subscribers are actually in New York. I can remember six drink order, but always forget the water. <laughs> if you give everybody a cup of water first, then you won't forget. That's my trick. When people walk in, I give them a water and a menu immediately. Water and a menu, water and a menu, water and a menu. Boom. It also helps to make sure that if they're starting to drink too much, they have a water available to them. They don't have to stop me. Um, I hate when people stop me for water. I'm always like, Come on, bro. You know, so just hit them with the water first and you'll never have to think about it. Um, but back to Daisy's question. I don't know how many subscribers are in the New York area. Daisy, I know you're in Jersey, so you could probably get out here. Um, but a lot of times the comments and questions that I get from you rock stars um, are international. Um, what's up to Nairobi, Kenya? Um, what's up to Ghana? What's up to Israel? Um, what's up to Brazil? Um, these are a lot of the countries that Australia has hit me up a few times um, that I see a lot of my comments coming from. So I find that really interesting. Um, Certainly, if you're watching and you, hey, Montreal, um, certainly if you are watching and you are from uh, Texas in the house, what's up? See you guys. I don't know if you would, I don't think you'd fly all the way to New York for a meet and greet to see me. Like, I'm pretty cool. Australia, what's up, mad dog? I stay getting comments from Australia. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but they love me down under. They love the rock star bar girl down under. Florida in the house. What's up, Florida? Um, so yeah, so Colorado. Colorado now. I'd be out in Colorado because my husband's um, brother lives in, I don't know, the mountains somewhere. I always forget the name of the town. Up in the mountains, somewhere near Denver. 
way up in the mountains. Um, but uh, I don't know how many people would come, honestly. Um, I will tell you this though. Um, you guys probably know, um, if you're like my devoted followers, that I have another YouTube channel that's pretty new. Uh, it's called Bronx Witch. Um, and on that YouTube channel, I talk about my spiritual life. I talk about Wicca, witchcraft, and tarot. And I also have an Etsy page called the Bronx Witch Bodega, um, where I say, oh, hey, Massachusetts. That's where, actually where my husband's from, Westford. Um, where I sell um, blessed candles, spell candles, custom spell work, um, blessed and enchanted crystals, uh, magically infused loose teas and resins and uh, incenses that I all make by hand. Um, so definitely check it out if you're interested in that. But I am going to um, probably, um, I'm still in the, it's called Bronx Switch, Alicia. Um, I'm working out the details right now, but I am probably going to be doing um, an artist showcase here in New York in Queens at the Melrose Ballroom on January 29th for an artist collective called Raw. Um, they do international, Philly, um, they do international shows for artists that make handmade goods, and I'm going to be participating in that show most likely, it's almost certain. Um, so I will be posting about that, um, and I will be doing free tarot readings. Um, thank you, Tanya. I will be doing free tarot readings at that show. So I'll be selling my items, but I'll just be doing free tarot readings for anybody that wants them. Um, so Daisy, if you're available January 29th, um, come on down to the Melrose Ballrooms. Yes, ma'am, I do. Um, and come get a free reading, maybe buy a candle or a crystal, come hang out with me. Um, so that'll be the closest thing to like a meet and greet right now. Um, also, I've been thinking about, you guys know I took a break from bartending in order to get um, Bronx Witch and Rockstar Bar Girl up and running. Mostly Rockstar Bar Girl, my, my website, and my online course, The Fundamentals Every Bartender Must Know, which is available right now. Um, you guys know I took a year um, off of bartending so that I could full-time uh, create that course, make it perfect, get it ready for you guys. And I've been getting like antsy. Do I follow Brene Reads? I don't. If she's a tarot reader, I will absolutely follow her. Um, I follow a lot of other readers. Um, I took a break, but every bartender always get it's like it's like crack. You know, you start to start to miss the cash money and the late nights, and you know. Um, so I've been thinking that I might pick up a couple of shifts somewhere. I don't know. Would you guys come visit me if I did? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm also really enjoying um, working from home and um, being able to, uh, she does celebrities mostly. Oh, well, then she has to read me because I'm famous. Um, the money shakes. Exactly. I'm like, cash. I'm tired of paying for things with my debit card. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think I don't know, I might pick up some shifts here or there. If I do, um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram. I just finished my nightclub job now doing cafe work, right? You know, I think we bartenders, for those of us who are really drawn to it and aren't just doing it like, you know, casually, um, the environment is something that really speaks to like our inner spirit. You know, when I was a child, my mother used to have to turn the lights off on me because I'd be up till three in the morning. As a little kid who has to be at school at eight o'clock, I'd be up till three in the morning with my little light on reading um, under my covers um, because I've just always been a night owl. I've always been a night child. I don't wake up till five in the evening mentally and I just like being up at night. It's where I'm creative. It's where I do most of my creating. Every single thing on my Etsy page I created between the hours of 12 and 5 a.m. No lie. I just, I get creative at night and I like being up at night and I live in New York City. It's like the coolest place to be like around at night. So um, I'm starting to get a little bit antsy. Um, so I might go back to bartending. If I do, um, I always post where I'm bartending on my Instagram page. So if you aren't already following me um, on Rockstar Bar Girl, it's at rockstar underscore bar girl, um, then uh, check me out, follow me on there and you'll know when and if I go back to bartending and where I will be. Um, Alicia, love the restaurant bar life. I know you, I can't get away from it. Alicia, you also hate the smoke in clubs. That's part of why you left. Okay, so do you mean cigarette smokes? Because in New York, um, 
probably, it's probably been 10 years now, um, smoking was outlawed in public. So you cannot smoke tobacco in bars, restaurants, clubs here anymore. Um, weed has been like decriminalized to a certain level or whatever, but it's still illegal to smoke in um, public um, places. So um, I'm very grateful. I don't have to worry about that. I tell you, I could not, I could not deal with it. Um, I used to be a cigarette smoker for a brief period in my life, gave it up, never looked back, and haven't been able to stand them um, since. Yeah, Florida. Yeah, you can still smoke in public in, in most places. My family's um, from Charleston, and like it still blows my mind that there's like smoking sections of restaurants and stuff. Um, I couldn't do it. I'll be honest, I truly could not do it. I'm so grateful that I live in a city where it has been outlawed. Um, the smell, the, the, the damage, I, I would have to get out of the industry. I just couldn't be trapped. Uh, it, it's, it's really bad on Latin night, damn. Um, I couldn't be trapped in a confined location um, and have to inhale um, cigarette smoke. Here in New York, um, the only indoor places where you have to encounter smoke are hookah lounges and cigar bars. And then, you know, that's a personal choice about whether or not you want to work in those types of environments. Um, I'm grateful I don't have to deal with that. So I'm so sorry um, that that happened. Quick question from Mad Dog. How do you deal with friends coming into work expecting free stuff? Because ever since I started bartending, my friends be coming in expecting free drinks and it makes it so awkward, doesn't it? It sure does. Somebody said, tell them to leave. Yeah, listen, um, at the end of the day, this is your job. Your obligations are to yourself and your bills and to your establishment because it pays yourself and your bills. Um, you have no responsibilities whatsoever to give anybody in your life a damn thing um, because what you are giving away behind the bar does not belong to you. So if you are giving away free things at the bar, you are stealing. And that is exactly how your bar or restaurant is going to look at it and they will punish you as such. All right, you are liable to lose your job. And then what? Then where will you be, right? Um, so uh, you will have to simply dig deep to figure out how to confront this issue with your friends. Um, you know your friends better than I do, so you will have a better idea of how you should approach it, um, you know, how they will respond. But anybody who is willing to jeopardize your job security, put you out of work, jeopardize your ability to pay your bills and support yourself just so that their broke asses don't have to pay $7 for a beer is not a real friend. Sorry, not sorry. I don't mean to seem preachy, preachy or judgmental of your friends. Um, I'm sure that they are friends for a reason, but um, no friend of mine would wanna endanger my livelihood or make it hard for me to keep my job. Um, and that's why they're my friends in the first place. So, um, all I can tell you is to not allow their pressuring to get to you and um, to just let them know straight up. I would recommend um, that you bridge the topic when it's not happening. That's a, that's a thing I've learned um, as somebody who has to oftentimes mediate tricky issues with my staff um, all the time. Uh, if you address a problem right when it's happening, people's attitudes and energies will be off. Bridge the topic with them at a totally different time. So when you're not at work and you're talking to them on the phone or you're hanging out at your house or whatever, just say, hey, you know, um, I just wanted to bring up something to you guys. Um, I really love that you come to visit me at work. I so, so appreciate it. Um, but I have to let you know that I take my job really seriously and I really need this job to pay my bills. So I can't give away free stuff. So, you know, I just have to ask you, when you're there, if I can, if I have a buyback tab, if I can hook you up, I absolutely will. But if I can't, I really can't. And I just ask you to respect that, um, you know, or I'm gonna have to ask you not to come visit me um, or not show up on my shifts or, you know, however. Like I said, your delivery is based on your friends and what will, what will be received by them. But I recommend that you bring the topic up, not during a shift, um, but at some other time and just let them know that 
you can't do it because you cannot do it. Um, you will screw yourself over trying to give people free stuff. And they'll only want more. Honestly, they'll only want more. Uh, did you bartend in the Bronx or Manhattan? Daisy, uh, you know what's funny? I've never bartended in the Bronx, which is so funny um, because I live here. I have only bartended in Manhattan in all 15 years of my uh, career, aside from the two years that I lived in D.C. and I bartended out there. But I have yet to bartend in the Bronx. Um, but the Bronx's um, restaurant and bar life is just beginning to kind of grow up and become something um, substantial. Um, a lot of the bars in this area are um, still just very small neighborhood bars and the Bronx is a very Latin area. Um, so a lot of the bars um, are very heavy um, on the Spanish language being spoken by the staff and by the customers. Um, and you know, yo hablo un poquito, but not enough to, to take a job in a Spanish speaking environment. So. I actually haven't, um, but I see that changing. And more importantly, honey, when I open up my first bar, it will absolutely be in the Bronx because I'm here to represent. I wanna see my neighborhood grow. I wanna see my neighborhood flourish and I wanna be a part of the growing uh, bar industry here in my neighborhood. So um, send me your good vibes because five year goal is to have my own bar here in the Bronx and then you all can come and see me. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see. I think I missed a question. Alicia, no Trafford. Mm -mm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There is nothing for free. Where is that gratuity? T I P me. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, and of course, like a good friend is going to tip you for hooking it up. Um, you know, that's supposed to be the rule, right? Like, I don't think people understand this. When a bartender hooks you up with something for free, the point is that money that you didn't spend on that drink, you're supposed to give to the bartender. Like, that's kind of the deal. Do you know what I'm saying? All things autumn. Hey, girl, how are you? Um, that's kind of like the deal, right? So like, for example, let's say it's a $10 beer. $10 beer, if I charged you for the $10 and you tipped me, um, the 20% that you're supposed to, that would cost you $12. If I give you the beer for free, you're supposed to kind of give me the $10 because you still save. Now, people don't necessarily do that, but bartenders do, which is why bartenders love other bartenders when they come to the bar because I understand that I'm still getting a savings by giving it right to you than by paying you from the... Um, it's experience underscore up from your AG. Hey girl, thank you, I'm so glad. Um, you know, the idea is that I'm still getting a little bit of a discount by you hooking me up, but I'm not supposed to just walk away without giving you anything extra on top, you know? And bartenders do that. That's why we don't have no money. Because <laughs> when we go out, we give all of our money to the next bartender, we pay it forward. So if you hook me up with a $10 drink, I'm probably gonna add that $10 to your tip or something close to it eight dollars to your tip or something like that but i'm not going to give you two dollar tip on that free drink that's that's not the that's not why you gave me the free drink okay um but like i said the free the thing that you are giving away for free you the bartender does not belong to you it belongs to the person who owns the bar so if you do not have permission to give that thing away for free, you don't have a buyback policy, you don't have a buyback tab, your manager hasn't okayed for you to do that, then you are stealing flat out. And if you get caught doing that, that could cost you your whole job. So think about that before you give anything to anybody for free, whether they're tipping or not. Make sure that you actually have permission to do that. Um, or you could find yourself without a J-O-B and then nobody's drinking. Now ain't nobody drinking. Now we all just not drinking. When I save people money, a lot of the time they tip me less. Yes, Becca, and that's why I don't really do it. <laughs> I don't really do it. Um, it takes a little while um, as you're doing this job to kind of feel out um, a buyback. The purpose of a buyback, um, there's two, in my opinion. Uh, did you know in Australia free pouring is illegal? Damn, illegal? Like, you'll get arrested? <laughs> illegal or just like frowned upon? Um, 
cl clarify that for me, Mad Dog. Like straight up illegal, like they will call the police or like just um, not okay. Um, but um, buybacks, we, uh, in, in case you don't know what a buyback is, a buyback is basically the policy of um, buying a person a drink after they have bought a certain amount of drinks to begin with. It's sort of like a thank you. It encourages people to continue drinking, all that. You'll get fined against our RSA laws. Oh, my. That's strict. I didn't know that. Um, I'm kind of okay with that. Over the years, I've actually started to really like jigger pouring um, just because it completely eliminates the conversation of, this doesn't taste strong enough. Bitch, you saw me measure it. You saw me measure it. This drink has had the same amount of alcohol as the last 14 that you had tonight. It's not my problem. You can't taste them anymore. So... I actually really like jigger pouring. Um, the better you get at it, the less it like slows you down. And I can bartend just as fast with a jigger, almost just as fast with a jigger as I can free pouring. So I, I actually really like it. Because anybody who tries to argue that they didn't get enough alcohol, I hold my jigger right up. You see this? This is what I use, ma'am. All right. Um, I don't know why it's a woman. It's like always a woman. Um, but um, there are two purposes to a buyback, in my opinion. Um, purpose number one is to smooth over mistakes. Remember earlier when I was talking about paying attention to your service tickets first? If someone's been waiting for a very long time and it's a, a an unreasonable or an, an unacceptably long period of time and you recognize that, a buyback allows you to smooth things over by buying that person's drink or round or offering them something free on the house uh, for the problem. Uh, the food came out really wrong. There was a chip piece of glass in their drink. Uh, you know, anything like that. A buyback is there to help smooth over problems. The other purpose of a buyback is to increase sales. So if you are giving a buyback to somebody who is not going to spend more as a result of getting the buyback, then you're kind of using your buyback wrong. It's not just a hookup. It's not just a freebie. The purpose of my buyback is to get you to spend more money to get you to tip me more. If I don't think that those things are going to happen as a result of my freebie, you get no freebie. Okay? This product, this alcohol is not mine to give away. It's not personal. These, these things literally do not belong to me. So I can only give you someone else's stuff if it's going to benefit this bar and the staff that works here. Otherwise... You pay the same thing everybody else does. So, and as I've gotten older and spent more time in this business, I've gotten more and more stingy about my buybacks. I used to throw them out left and right. Now, it's it's not uncommon me for for not uncommon for me to go days, multiple shifts where I have a zero dollar buyback tab. It has to be worth it to me and the bar um, to give it to you. Quite frankly. Um, regulars, um, you know, you'll feel out your regulars. Um, some regulars, not all regulars are created equal. Some of them are regulars and they suck. Sorry. Some of them are regulars and they're cheap. Some of them are regulars and they sit in the bar for seven hours and only buy two drinks. Well, you know what? Maybe you don't need to buy back because you're a regular. You're going to be here next Tuesday whether I buy you this drink or not. So keep that in mind about the regulars as well. Um, you know, we fall into the habit of giving, uh, you're welcome, Becca, um, into the habit of giving regulars buybacks and because we feel like we have to because we're going to see them all the time. But instead of feeling awkward about the fact that you're going to see them all the time, use that to empower you to not give them a buyback. Bob is going to be at your bar at 5.30 when he gets off of work every damn day, whether you buy him a free drink or not, right? Because that's what Bob does. So don't feel pressured to give Bob a free drink because it's not benefiting you or the bar in any way. 
It's not increasing the chances that he's going to come back. It's not increasing the amount of drinks that he's going to buy. Bob taps out at drink number six pretty much every night. You know what I'm saying? So be strategic about that as, as well. Um, don't feel like you have to use your buybacks on the regulars. They're regulars for a reason. Save your buybacks for clearing up problems with people who aren't regulars, who might never come back because the food was horrible or there was a delay on their service. Use the buyback to get them to come back to you. Um, and use the buyback to increase sales uh, for people. If somebody has bought, is buying shots for all six people in their party, buy them a round because they're likely to get another round for everybody or to tip you really well because you made things a little easier on their pocket. So be strategic and use your buybacks to serve those two purposes, not just to hook people up because you feel bad or you feel like you have to, all right? Um, let me just scroll through here. I think jigger pouring makes me feel like I'm crafting. Yes, it does. Absolutely. And if you are interested in craft cocktailing, you must be competent with a jigger pour. Um, I know bartenders who can jigger pour with two jiggers. Um, that shit is impressive as hell. Um, if you want to do cocktail competitions, that is the check out my instagram by the way um i don't know if the story is still up it's probably gone but i recently went to speed rack which is amazing i cannot believe that this was my first speed rack um created by an amazing woman named ivy mix and yes that's her real freaking name Ivy Mix, um, she is a world-class cocktail bartender, well-known in the industry, especially here in New York, and she created this dope-ass cocktail competition just for women, where the proceeds go to breast cancer research. Um, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen, and my amazing kick-ass cocktailing bartender friend, Amanda Swanson, participated, um, and it was just super, super cool to go there. Um, but, you know, people who are competitive, competing in competitions they can hold two three jiggers at a time it's phenomenal so if you're interested in the craft cocktail world um first of all follow at jigger happy on instagram um that's amanda's cocktail page um but also um get good at working with your jiggers because if you can be fast with jigger service um you know then craft cocktailing is the future is bright for you all right um let me see i think I got everybody's questions. Okay, I just want to make sure um, that I address all the question mark questions. Um, again, a reminder, uh, the topic of this tip of the week is how to memorize multiple drink orders. We went through five tips. If you miss them, rewatch this video from the start so you get all five tips. If anybody has any questions about those five tips, you can ask them to me now. Um, I will answer them. Um, excuse me, too much coffee. Um, otherwise, um, you can always drop them for me down below in the comments um, and I will definitely get back to you. Tanya, no problem. Um, I love answering questions that are actually recommended by you guys because then I know that people are going to be interested. There are topics that occur to me that I think people wanna know about, but it's much better to hear it right from you guys so that I bring you, um, you know, the content that you guys are looking for. Um, before any of you peace out, please make sure to give me a thumbs up on this video so I know that this is useful so that the Instagram algorithm knows that this is useful and it recommends it to people. I think you guys like the live format. I'm loving the live format. Oh, hi, Katie. Hi, say hi to the people. This is Eartha Kitty, guys. This is my, you see that fupa? This is my fat cat. My fat kitty with her fupa. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try not to be distracted by her. She, it's uh, almost dinner time, so she loves me now. Any other time of the day, she's like, whatever. Um, don't show your butt to the people. Oh, she's classless. Uh, but anyway, um, I think you guys like the live format. I love the live format. Um, so I'm gonna keep doing the tip of the week live um, until you guys you know, tell me not to. So if you like it, please click on the thumbs up so that I know that this is a good um, format for you guys. Um, I wanna remind you that my instructional videos from now on are going to be available on my website so that I can include notes, 
your welcome mad dog quizzes assignments things like that to make it more interactive and more helpful so please make sure to go over to the rockstarbargirl.com and sign up on the mailing list so that you can access all of my classes all of the videos on my website are 100% free. So are the class notes, all the materials, and my 40-page ebook. Everything is free. The only thing that um, you would have to pay for on the website is my Rockstar Bar Kit, which is my 16-piece custom bar kit, or my full online course, The Fundamentals Every Bartender Must Know, which has like eight lessons and the bar kit included and all that good stuff, quizzes, assignments, all of that. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, that is for purchase. It's available on the site, but all of my instructional videos um, are going to be um, free. So make sure to head over there and sign up so you know when they are available. Two really cool videos are coming up, my herbal infused honey syrup video and my wine video, which is going to be phenomenal. So definitely check that out, guys. Um, I think we've addressed all of the questions that have to do specifically with today's topic of how to memorize um, lots of drink orders. Again, if you tuned in late, just go to the beginning of the video and start over. It will be available on YouTube um, right after this is done. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I think we hit 11 people today. That's huge. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in, even if just for a little bit. Um, leave me any comments or questions that occur to you down below. I'll make sure to get to them. And uh, yeah, I will uh, sign off now. Uh, and Liz Mick, you're wonderful. Thank you. You're wonderful. I'm happy to bring this info to you guys. Um, so yeah, um, I hope to see all of you um, either on my website um, as a part of the mailing list or in my next tip of the week, um, which will be live next week, Friday at 4 p.m. So thanks a lot, you guys. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go feed Kitty um, and film my weekly tarot reading video. Actually, that's my next thing that I'm going to do. So follow me on Instagram at Bronxwitch or on YouTube. Uh, the name is also Bronxwitch if you're interested in that type of stuff. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I will talk to all of you later. As always, I will see you in the next video. Bye, rock stars.